Hey everybody, Mr. Megadosh here and Apple just released the first major update to macOS Monterey 12.1. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything that you need to know about the update, including fixes, new features, news about universal control, memory leaks, and open core legacy patcher unsupported Mac news. Let's jump in and get started. Let's first talk about the details of the Monterey 12.1 update. Apple released this update on December 13th, 2021. The build version is 21C52. Apple also released a bunch of other updates, including iOS 15. 15.2, iPad OS, Watch OS 8.3, TVOS 15.2, HomePod OS 15.2, Big Sur 11.6.2, the Cali and Security Update 2021 008, and they release Xcode 13.2. Apple also released a full installer of macOS Monterey 12.1. The full installer is 12.16 gigabytes. They also released a M1 IPSW restore file for Apple Configurator 2 restores, and that is 14.14 gigabytes. Also, the Delta update from 12.0.1 to 12.1 is 2.4 gigabytes. If you're updating from a beta release, it can be as small as 950 megabytes if you're updating, for example, the RC1 release of macOS Monterey. Also, the M1 firmware was updated to 7429.61. 1.2. If you have a T2 Intel Mac, the T2 Bridge OS was updated in 1916.10.647. And Safari was also updated 15.2.176.12.3616. Next, let's talk about the Mac OS Monterey 12.1 security fixes. Apple fixed 42 individual security fixes, and I've put a link here to the security content page, and you can see all of the vulnerabilities that were fixed or patched in this release. It's a really large list. Next, let's talk about some of the fixes in the macOS Monterey 12.1 update. First of all, the desktop and screensaver may appear blank after selecting photos from the photos library. So if you go into the desktop and screensaver and you selected photos from your photo library, they could actually be blank and that is fixed in this update. Also a major one, the trackpad could become unresponsive to taps or click. A lot of people were complaining about this one and this is fixed in the 12.1 update. External displays may not charge some MacBook Pro and MacBook Air computers when using Thunderbolt USB-C and it wouldn't charge your MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. That is now fixed in this release. Also, HDR video playback on YouTube could cause the 2021 MacBook Pro computers to panic. So if you were using HDR video, all of a sudden your Mac would go blank and kernel panic, you would have to restart. That's fixed in this update. The menu bar extras may be obscured by the camera housing on the 2021 MacBook Pro computers. And a lot of people were complaining about that. If you had too many menu bar items up here on your MacBook Pro, all the way over here, and they would actually go behind the notch and you couldn't select them. Now that's fixed in this update. Another one that a lot of users were complaining about was that MagSafe would not charge on a 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro when you close the lid. So all of a sudden the MagSafe would flash or not charge at all, and that's fixed in the 12.1 update. Next, let's talk about undocumented fix. This is a pretty big undocumented issue. I reported on this back in October, where if you had a macOS Mojave system and you ran the macOS Big Sur or the macOS Monterey update and your system had a bunch of spotlight index folders that were in the thousands or even up to millions, the upgrade would crash and stop at a progress bar and you could not recover. So Apple changed the macOS Monterey 12.1 installer and the macOS Big Sur 11.6.2 installers to prevent this from happening again. Glad they also backported it to macOS Big Sur. Now let's talk about a big one, memory leaks in macOS Monterey 12.0.1. Are they resolved in 12.1? What was happening is, is certain things like the Windows server, or if you change your cursor to a different size, or the control center would grab gigabytes worth of memory. So you know you would have a memory leak by going into Activity Monitor, and for example, that process would be using five to 10 to even 30 or 40 gigabytes worth of memory. So that was a big issue, and I'm seeing mixed results. Apple did not put any anything about memory leaks in the patch notes, so it's tough to say what was resolved and what wasn't. I'm already hearing early reports that some of the things were fixed, but others like the Windows server might not be, so I'm still trying to gather information. I'll put an update in the description below, or I'll update the website when I get more information on the memory leaks. Welcome. Let's talk about universal control. Apple just announced today that universal control was delayed until spring of 2022. This is a huge disappointment. It was already delayed until fall of this year, but here we are getting into almost in the middle of December and we still didn't have universal control. And as soon as it wasn't in the 12.1 patch notes, we knew we were not gonna get it in 2021. On the other hand, we don't want them to push out a buggy product. So if they can get it under control and working really well, just like they showed in the WWDC example, then take a little time, 
get it right because this is one of the most important features of macOS Monterey. It's just unfortunate that it has to be delayed until it gets fixed properly. So that's an update on Universal Control. Now let's talk about the brand new 12.1 new features. First of all, SharePlay. SharePlay was delayed from the initial launch of 12.0.1 and now is in 12.1. Introducing SharePlay. Keep FaceTime conversations going while you watch TV shows or movies or listen to music or share your screen with SharePlay. It is an entirely new way to have experiences with family, friends, no matter the distances. You can see here, they're watching Ted Lasso and you can see the reactions of your friends or family in another window. First of all, they're shared controls. It gives every everyone the ability to pause, play, rewind, or fast forward. It also has a smart volume feature that automatically lowers the audio of the movie, TV, or song when your friends speak. And finally, screen sharing lets everyone on a FaceTime call look at photos, browse the web, or help each other out. So hey, if you're trying to do a tech support call with your friends or family, this is going to be really helpful for you because you can actually see the screen when you're trying to help them out. So let's take a look at the differences here. This 12.0.1 you can see is a regular FaceTime. But if if you go to a 12.1 system, it's a totally different design. You can start a new FaceTime with this button here, or you can create a link for someone to join your FaceTime through copy link, mail, messages, airdrop, or whatever you want to do. SharePlay is a really great feature for macOS Monterey. Apple Music Voice Plan is a new subscription tier that gives you access to all songs, playlists, and stations in Apple Music using Siri. Just as Siri suggests music based on your listening history, likes or dislikes. Play it again lets you access that list of your recently played music. So let's take a look at that on the new 12.1 Mac. As you see here, you've got a button that lets you join that new plan, play anything with Siri, only $4.99 a month, try for free. Now let's look at the differences in photos. Memories has been redesigned with a new interactive interface, new animation and transition styles, and multiple image collages. New memory types include additional international holidays, child-focused memories, and trends over time, and improved pet memory. The next change Apple made was to messages. The communication safety setting gives parents the ability to enable warnings for children when they receive or send photos that contain nudity. Safety warnings contain helpful resources for children when they receive photos that contain nudity. The next thing is for Siri and Search. Expanded guidance in Siri, Spotlight, and Safari Search to help children and parents stay safe online and get help with unsafe situations. Another helpful feature for parents. Another change was to Apple ID. The digital legacy allows you to designate people as legacy contacts so they can access your iCloud account for personal information in the event of your death. Now this was actually announced at WWDC for production launch but was delayed to 12.1 but I'm glad that it made it in this release. And then we have a change to Apple TV app. The store tab allows you to browse by and rent movies and TV shows all in one place. Now let's talk about what's new in Enterprise for Mac OS Monterey 12.1. And this is for anyone that manages Macs in a business or a school and you run a remote management system. The first one is, is that Mac computers with Apple Silicon M1 connected to Ethernet can now activate automatically when Erase All Content and Settings is performed by your MDM server. So if you sent that command down to erase that Mac and you wanted to go to, through Auto Advance, then it would get stuck at the Activate Mac screen. So now with Ethernet plugged in in 12.1, it now goes past that screen and automatically enrolls you into DDP and you're all set up. The next thing is screen sharing can now be enabled remotely only by MDM. So if you were using Kickstart, you're gonna have problems and you make, gotta make sure that you enable it by MDM after installing 12.1. Also, it resolves an issue where iCloud Photos could be enabled while it's restricted by MDM. So you could actually get into iCloud Photos even though it was restricted by your management server. That's fixed. Resolves an issue that prevented software update from recognizing smart card enforcement for authentication. Meaning that if you had a smart card enforcement on your Mac and then you wanted to be able to install a software update, update, it would only prompt for password instead of the pin. That's fixed in 12.1. Resolves an issue that prevented file vault recovery key from rotating. If you wanted to rotate your recovery key in your MDM management server, it wouldn't work, but now that works in the 12.1 update. Now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher Unsupported Mac news. The 12.1 update works really fine. If you want to update your Open Core Legacy Patcher Unsupported Mac, all you need to do is go into System Preferences and then click on Software Update and you'll see the 12.1 update in here. This has already been installed so I can test it out. As you can see, it's already up to date to 12.1. If you have a around 2013 and below Mac, you're still going to have to reinstall the post volume patches in Open Core Legacy Patcher. So all you need to do is go into the Applications folder to open up Open Open Core Legacy Patcher application. Once you're in, all you need to do is run number three to install the post volume patch, and we'll hit number one to patch the system, and then Y for yes. 
and it's gonna go download all the files, install them, and all you need to do is reboot, and your unsupported Mac now has 12.1 and is fully patched and ready to go. Now, keep in mind, if you have a root patch Mac, which is again for Monterey, usually around 2013 and below, you're gonna get the full 11 gigabyte installer in the system preferences menu in here. Now, if you have a around 2014 or higher Mac, you'll get a Delta update, which is around two, giga, two and a half gigabytes. So that's what you'll know with the size. So we'll go over here and click on enter. Also, just today, OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.3.2 update just came out. And this update has a bunch of changes and fixes, and I might do a, a video just to cover them all and show you how to update from your current version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher to 0.3.2. So that's it for OpenCore Legacy Patcher news. And that's macOS Monterey 12.1 update. What do you think about this update? Are you gonna install it? What do you think about the delay of universal control? What do you think about SharePlay? Tell me what you think in the comments. I can't wait to hear and have a discussion about it. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button or the playlist in this window. And if you wanna support the channel, you can join my Patreon. I truly appreciate all my patrons. Thanks a lot and we'll catch you in the next video.